in in school and college where you stand up for you know you can't talk about the latest movies because you don't watch those movies which everybody else is talking about you can't take part in those quiz competitions where most of the questions are about the film stars that's fine of course the sad thing is today some a lot of today's believers can talk about the movies because they watch it watch them as much as anybody else that's because standards have slipped and some of those so called believers are not really believers um i can't imagine how a born again believer can watch a movie with even a one second scene of something sexually immodest or ugly just one second and not have a bad conscience i can't imagine how they can't have a bad conscience i can't imagine how any believer can sleep peacefully at night having watched that without deep repentance and a few tears i can't imagine how such a believer uh can go by undisciplined by god after watching that and think of the believers who are watching movie after movie after movie and they're never disciplined by god brother sister perhaps you're not a child of god at all god's put you on the shelf maybe you were a child of god once upon a time but do you know you can lose your salvation you may be on the shelf today you can do all types of things now and god leave you alone but if you go determined to live godly it doesn't say every Tom Dick and Harry who calls himself a Christian is going to be persecuted it's one who is determined to be godly is going to find he's it's like a fish out of water in school he's going to find himself like a fish out of water in college where he will not cheat he will not do what's wrong not only he won't look at somebody else's paper but he won't show his own paper to somebody else see in our unconverted days we have all probably cheated in some small exam or something but i hope we have repented of it and that now that we are children of god one of the first things we need to teach our children is we should not cheat and don't show other people your paper either and then you won't be very popular those are the kindergarten lessons in being persecuted for seeking to live upright and godly in Christ Jesus i mean i would consider it a tremendous honor if my children became unpopular in school because they refused to cheat or show their paper to somebody else or refused to spend time speaking evil about the teacher when everybody else was speaking evil about the teacher I would be honored to have a child like that who just stayed away from such rebellious conversation. I mean I'd be honored if I heard that some boy or girl in CFC was like that. Because they are my children too. I'd be honored to have a child like that who stood up and was willing to face the disapproval and the unpopularity that comes when you don't go with the crowd. these are little upper kindergarten lessons you know you go from one class to another and you go on to your place of work and it's so difficult to be a true christian we are talking about second timothy 3:12 of those who want to live a godly life in christ jesus i was talking to a christian believer a um, chartered accountant who came to one of our meetings not in one of our churches and uh, i said hey tell me don't chartered accountants have to when you work for companies you know fudge the accounts and um, write wrong things and tell lies and things like that and you know cheat in order to may pay less tax for your company and tell lies to the income tax officers etc he said yeah i mean there may be a few really godly chartered accountants in the world but many christians are not they don't have a conscience about it they because they got to earn their living i remember one brother who stopped writing false accounts and lost his job 
And he came and asked me what I thought about it. I said, it's the best thing you ever did. And even if your family starves, it's better to starve doing what's right. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And you know, the sad thing was so many other believers, he was not here, it was in another town, not in our church either. There were a lot of other believers around him who said, that's okay, we got to adjust a little bit when we live in this world. Well, if you're going to adjust, that's a very popular word, adjust, you'll never be persecuted. It's those who want to live godly in Christ Jesus who are going to be persecuted who say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And you know, you can get pretty, you can get double promotions if you stand up for the Lord in God's kingdom. You may lose something earthly, but it's not possible to really stand up with, for the Lord and be popular in this world. No. Jesus wasn't. Jesus said, in John 15, he said these words. Here's another test of our discipleship and our Christianity. Jesus said in John 15, verse 18 onwards. John 15, verse 18. If the world hates you, you know it hated me before it hated you. Now listen to this. This is very important. If you belong to this world, the world would love its own. Or as the Message Bible says, if you live on the world's terms, the world will love you as one of its own. But since I picked you to live on God's terms and no longer on the world's terms, the world's going to hate you. On whose terms do you live your life? At home, at place of work? on the world's terms or God's terms. That's going to determine maybe your promotion, maybe the recommendation you get at the end of the year or the report that your boss writes about you. I remember when I was in the Navy, nobody physically beat me or slapped me or for being a Christian, but they make a lot of fun of me because I carried my Bible prominently whenever I went out of the ship for a meeting and uh, I wasn't ashamed of being known as a Christian not just a regular Christian but a disciple of Jesus what others would call a fanatic and um, it also meant that it affected my ambitions in the Navy because I remember when I joined the military academy, I had one goal. I wasn't converted. My goal was go to right, right up to the top. And that's the way I was going till Christ came into my life. And I yielded my life to him and I decided to live for him. I suddenly found that if I wanted to go to the top, I would have to keep quiet about my Christianity. I mean, I could fill the form saying religion Christian. That's okay, nobody would object to that. But it mustn't be manifested in my daily work and walk and I must avoid all that. I must behave like everybody else, live on the world's terms. And I had to make a choice, perhaps like you have to make a choice. And I mention it only to encourage you to make the right choice. I'm so glad that when I was 21 years old and I got baptized, I decided from that day I'm going to make that choice. Forget my earthly ambitions. I'll go as far as possible. But I want to go higher in God's kingdom. That promotion in that school is more important for me than on earth. If you make that decision, that'll be one of the wisest decisions you ever made in your life. And the result was that many, many times I found myself facing up to situations where my senior officers would tell me to do something. And you know, it's a serious thing. It's not like saying no in your secular office. If you say no to a senior officer in the military, you can be jailed just for saying no. You cannot say no in the military. And uh, I used to say, I'm sorry, sir, I can't do that. I'm a Christian. I would give the reason also. It's against my conscience. And one of them even told me, you've got to stop being a Christian if you want to continue in the Navy. I said, no, I'm a Christian. 
But you know what happened? The result of all this was, I mean, they never threw me in jail. God kept me out of that, but I was ready to go. Um, but they would, you know, inconvenience me in other ways, maybe not write a good recommendation about me uh, so that I wouldn't get a promotion or once transfer me. In half an hour, I got transferred. Uh, these are little things, uh, mosquito bites, compared to the lions <laughs> that ate up the early Christians. But um, there were little things that made my backbone strong. I got a backbone. A lot of Christians don't have a backbone. They can't stand straight. They crawl. You know, the dif like the difference between a lizard and a man? Lizard can't walk up straight. A lot of Christians are like that. They're Christians and they crawl and crawl around. They're not standing up erect for Christ. They're sort of sneaking around in their place of work, hoping that nobody will know that they're wholehearted disciples of Jesus. Well, then you're not going to be persecuted. No. You'll get your promotions and you'll get a good recommendation and you'll get your increments on time and so many things like that. <laughs>